Okay, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the Wikipedia page. Wish I had it, but, but I don't. Not right now, anyway, because Uh, here is a Shovelware is a derogatory computer jargon for software bundles most noted for the quantity of what is included rather than the quality or usefulness. Okay. Um, yeah, that's what shovelware is. Um, the metaphor implies that the creator showed little care for the quality of the original software as if the new compilation or version has been created indiscriminately adding tiles by the shovel in the same way someone would shovel bulk material into a pile. The term shovelware is coined by semantic analogy to phrases like shareware and freeware, which describe methods of a software distribution. It first appeared in the early 1990s when large amounts of public domain, open source, and shareware demos and programs were copied onto CD-ROMs and advertising magazines or sold at computer flea markets. Uh, the quote. Old and or we program shoveled onto a CD to turn into a quick buck. Computer Gaming World wrote that in, in 1990 that those who do not want, who do not wish to wait for software that is used to make CD-ROM in the same format, the software tool works and access software plan to release game packs of several classic titles. By 1993, the magazine referred to software repackaged on CD-ROM as shovelware describing one collection from access as having a rather dusty menu and another from the software tool works the reigning king of software repackaging efforts as include games that were mostly mediocre even in their prime the one exception uh chess master 2000 used stunning cga graphics 1994 the magazines have shovelware as old and or weak programs that shoved Onto a CD to turn a quick buck. This is stupid. Although poor quality collection existed at least as far back as the BBS era, 
Uh, the term shovelware became commonly used in the early 1990s to describe CD-ROMs with collections of shareware or public domain software. The capacity of CD-ROM was 450 to 700 times that of the floppy disk and 10 to 30 times larger than the hard disk commonly fit into personal computers. This outsized capacity meant that very few users would install the disk's entire contents, encouraging producers to fill them by including as much existing content as possible, often without regard to the quality of the material. Advertising the number of titles on the disk often took precedence over the quality of the content. Software reviewers, displeased with the huge collections of inconsistent quality, dubbed this practice shovelware um but uh but uh, my computer experience in the 90s was very limited so i have nothing so i uh I, so i hadn't had any my i had much experience with shovelware outside of the nintendo systems that i own or have owned in the past some CD-ROM computer games have mo had moderately sized games that did not fit fill the disc, which enabled the manufacturer to bundle the demo versions of their other products on the same disc. Okay, um, the prevalence of shovelware has decreased. Due to the practice of downloading individual programs from crowd of crowdsourced or curated app store, becoming the prompt predominant mode of software distribution, it continues in some cases with bundles of pre-installed software, where many extra programs of dubious qual of dubious quality and usefulness are included in with a piece of hardware. Shovelware it existed has its sort has its origins in computers. Um Okay, so shovelware video games. This is where it gets confusing. Um, so low budget, poor quality games released in the hopes of being purchased by unsuspecting customers are often referred to as shovelware. This can lead to discoverability issues when a platform has no quality control. Several well-known examples were released for the Wii, including ports of PlayStation 2 games which had been previous which had previously been only which had on, previously only released in Europe made by Data Design Interactive and here is that DDI Limited was a British video game developer and publisher. Um, that's um, it uh, it started in 1983 as DD Data Design Systems and uh, Hales a win. England and it was acquired by Stuart Green's Green Solutions in 1990 and incorporated as a limited company on August of 1999. In 2007, they acquired Metro 3D Incorporated's European office, Metro 3D Europe, Europe Limited, and it reformed into a popcorn arcade, their Wii development subsidiary. A United States office 
DDI LLC was formed, was opened in Sarasota, Florida, and announced in 2003 of May 2008, which moved, moved to Osprey, Florida due to insolvency. The original United Kingdom office went out of business as of the 24th of August 2012. Their notable games include Conquest Earth, Lego Rock Raiders, uh, which was a game for Windows for Microsoft Windows, um, Nickelodeon Party Blast. For the um, for micro infograms, uh, it was uh, okay. Anubis Two, Myth Makers, Trixie and Toyland, Ninja Breadman, Billy the Wizard, Rocket Broomstick Racing, Classic British Motor Racing, London Taxi Rush Hour, Myth Makers, Supercar GP. Racing game, it was released from Jusa in 2006 for Windows. They designed it as it will release the game on the Wii. Wii, PlayStation 2, and Windows. And here's the reception. 3.5 out of 10 at IGN. Wow. Um, Rock and Roll Adventures. I've seen that. Myth Makers. Orbs of Doom. Uh, An American Tale. Well, it's action based off a of movie. Okay, it's a game based off of a 2000 and... Okay, what? Uh, 1986. I had no idea they had a video game for American Tale. Action Girls Racing. <sighs> Action Girls Racing. Oh my fucking god. This is not not this is not a good this is it is not a good game. I've seen gameplay footage of it. Blame it on George or whoever. Um, uh, blame it on George is, um, the YouTuber that brought PS2 and the 360 games. Action Girls Race. Uh, oh. 
Uh, okay, putting a Z at adding a putting a Z at the end of a word where an S should go does not make it look cool. Um, Ninja Bread, man. Started on the PlayStation 2. Okay. Um, Ninja Bread Man received uh, anonymously negative reviews upon release. The PlayStation 2 version. Ninja Bread Man 2 Rays of Fury. <laughs> It was announced. <laughs> okay. Despite the... Okay, here's where it gets confusing. Um, despite the negative reception for the fir of the first game, uh, on the 23rd of January 2008, a sequel titled Ninja Bread Man 2... Uh, Blaze of Fury was announced. Not much information nor a release date had been issued, but it had been revealed that Data Design had created a website asking for fans of the game to give ideas for the sequel. It is likely the sequel will never be developed due to Data Design ceasing development in 2009-2012. Data Design went out of business, making a direct sequel unlikely to happen. Three other games, which were basically the same game. Here's another one. Shovelware. I claim is a defunct. Um, and it has been um September first, two thousand and four. History, okay, the history, um... Okay, the subsidiaries, um, games published, it's a list. Uh, okay, um... LJN. LJN's another one. LJN was a toy and video game company located in New York City. LJN. Flying Edge, Arena Entertainment. Cl 
club acclaim. LJN was uh, okay, so yeah. Um, so LJN, okay, following the acquisition, LJN's revenue doubled at to twenty seven million dollars by, um, 1986 and continued to rise into 1987. However, a faulty toy gun manufactured by LGN caused MCA's profits to fall by 79.5% to 1981. This is LGN's the same year Friedman left the company. LGN did not recover, as a result of which MCA announced that they intend to sell the company. MCA agreed to sell Edgley into a claim for an undisclosed sum paid in cash and stock. And LJN was dissolved in 1995. <sighs> Acclaim made uh, shovelware, nothing but shovelware for the most part. <sighs> Uh, software, um, hardware. Yeah, um, this is a uh, Joy Con. I don't even know why uh, I don't even know why they shoehorn they shoehorn stuff Okay.
Two hackers on the way to be able to run Switch to develop systems to help across software dev menu on non-developer Switch system units, allowing hackers to be able to directly load games on the SD cards or create custom avatars for your profile, can pornographic and not safe for work pictures, which violate Nintendo terms of service. A Nintendo spokesperson responded to Kotaku's article on top of saying that modified Switch systems have been banned. Of course it did. Because if they can do that if they can do that, then they could actually create shovelware. Okay, shortly after the release of Nintendo Switch Online, hackers and modders were able to figure out how to run authorized ROMs on the Nintendo Switch NES emulator. Uh, okay, a Switch hacker go who goes by the name Devran was the first to discover the hack and posted his findings on YouTube, which prompted the modder who goes by the name Heck to investigate the matter of two others and their findings were late posted. In- Why are they okay? <sighs> Okay, YouTube, yeah. Which is good. Okay, yeah, this is stuff. If YouTube is on there, I'm going to go ahead and check it out. Okay, yeah, that's...
Look at all the stuff. But, what the article does not uh, state is shovelware on the Switch. In other words, um, anybody can... Uh, slap something together and call it a game. So, who's to say? Um... Uh, for those of you who've uh, somehow found this video, um, I'm going to share it with my Twitter. Um, share it with Twitter. I do thank you for um, checking it out if you can. If you, it, it, checking it out if you can. Um, and, um, enjoy the rest of your day, and, uh, clicking like will very well be appreciated. I'm still relatively new to this, uh, YouTube thing. Um, and, uh, take care.